Hello and welcome to another edition of Mobile Monday, the video podcast from Godasageek.com where I take a look at three mobile games and let you know whether they're worth buying. I'm Godasageek's Deputy Editor Martin Baker and I'll be walking you through the three games this week. The first game that we're going to talk about is Righteous Kill 2. And if you've read Mobile, not Mobile Monday, Mac Medley recently, I reviewed the Mac version of Righteous Kill, uh, the first game in the series. There was an iOS version, and I think I reviewed that on a really, really, really old uh, the written version of, uh, of Mobile Monday. But we're finally getting around to the second one. It's brand new, is Righteous Kill 2. It came out last week or the week before. I can't really remember when it came out, but not long ago. Uh, it's a similar type of game. There's a little bit more... Um, like little mini games that the one thing that I said about Ratchet's Kill, the first Ratchet's Kill, what I liked is that it kind of went from the search for everything in the scene bits more into mini games, and I really enjoyed the mini games. I thought that the uh, the search the scene searching bits were a little bit old school now. The Ratchet's Kill Two seems to there's still as you can see from the screen right now there's a list of stuff that I'm going to have to find in this scene. Uh, but they seem to move more towards the, the mini games. There's more of them. They seem to be better made and things like that. So, but as you can see, it's uh, th- at least this first part is uh, a matter of searching for everything to the scene. So, in the left hand side, uh, you can see the list of things that I need, and it's just a matter of finding them in the scene, which can be easy or difficult depending on the scene sometimes. We'll try and find them as quick as I can. Oh. It's because I can. Sometimes when you tap on things, little bits of information come up. It, the whole point is that you're supposed to be tracking down a serial killer. So the fact that information comes up some point sometimes is uh, is interesting for the story. It doesn't really do anything for the game, but it it does things for the uh, for the story, obviously. So you'll see things like that as well more often, where you can see from the from the list in the left hand side that. A crowbar is something that I need to find. Logically, I would assume that the crowbar is used to probably open the man cut hole cover, which would allow me to probably find more things down there. So we'll see if we can find the crowbar. It might be this thing's sparkling, so we'll see if we can see anything in here. Uh, anything here? Something else that strips of paper. Well, that's. I'm guessing that's that'll they'll be used for a a bit of a clue later on. Something that we need to figure out. What else can we find? Another thing that you can do if you're struggling to find everything on the list as well is press the the hint button in the top left hand corner, um, and it'll basically do that. It'll highlight where something is. In that case, it was the broom. Oh, and another strip of paper there. So we've got all but one of the strips of paper. We'll see if there's anything else. Another thing that you can do is if you you can just there's no real penalty for just tapping everything on the screen. There'll be a little bit of of noise that you can hear in the background, a little click, um, but there's no real. You know, you get a little message popping up, but there's nothing that no, nothing that will really stop you from doing it. So I, I want to find that crowbar. Oh, the hint thing's cooled down again, so we can use the hint again. Fair enough. What garbage bags. That was what that was. Hoping to find the uh, the crowbar so that I can use it on the manhole cover. Where are we? Oh, what was that? Umbrella. Umbrella. Uh, mask. Strip of paper. Umbrella and crowbar. We need now. Let's use another hint. Uh, what if we use the the uh, the crowbar on there? But I haven't got the crowbar yet. Yes, yeah, lots of mistakes. You can see where the where the difficulty lies. Sometimes you you, know, you pinch and zoom in to to have a closer look. But if you don't know what you're looking for, one thing that you can do in order to help figure out what you're looking for is click on. The item in the uh, in the list, and it'll show you. That's obviously everybody knows what crowbar looks like. That's 
not surprising, but it kind of shows you the orientation. The way that it appears in that thing on the left is how it will appear in the in the scene itself. So we know it's not hanging on something or or something like that. Now we know it's more or less horizontal. So it gives us a better chance of actually finding it there. Crowbar on the floor, hidden. So now hopefully we can have a look under here, use the crowbar on there, and then probably the, uh, so the torch in there to see what we can see. Strip of paper, umbrella is what we're, we want. Umbrella, and is it a strip of paper somewhere? There we are. So as you've found everything, you go to the next part of the game and it will probably be I'm judging by what we've picked up, it'll probably be a little mini game to do with, yeah, there we go, putting the pieces of paper together. So you can see that you're supposed to, you know, there's, there's, there's the two parts to the game, really. There's the finding things in the scene, and then once you've found usually the one or two things that, that is actually important to the story, you go back to the station and do these little mini games in order to put things together to further the story and the case for the poet killer. But that's Righteous Kill 2. The second game that we're going to talk about this week is Jaws Revenge. And it's, is it Shark Week now? It was Shark Week last week on Discovery Channel. So that's probably why the game uh, got released. Plus, it's never a bad time to bring out a Jaws game. It's a free-to-play game. And when it gets past all the loading screens and adverts and things like that, as I mentioned, it's a free-to-play game, so uh, you'll see adverts popping up. There'll be things to close down, which might be a turn-off for some people. But the game's quite interesting, so we'll jump straight into the game. And the whole point is to... You're given a set of challenges. So if you're going to Amity Island, you, you can see these are the levels that we've completed. You get a set of, of challenges, and you basically just have to play the level and try and beat those challenges. So if we go into the game, you play as the shark. As I won't call him Jaws because the shark wasn't called George. It wasn't called Jaws. Uh, but the whole point is to eat things basically and try and keep it by moving through the level and jumping. Your health goes down in the bottom left-hand corner, and by eating things, you keep that health up. So obviously, you saw at the beginning of the game uh, that the goal was to survive until boy five which is uh, the level split up into uh, various sea boys and the one of the objectives for this level is just happens to be to reach level five which means that i just have to survive by eating seagulls eating fish eating swimmers it is a jaws game after all so that's the first one and the whole point is to get to uh boy five as well as completing the uh the other objective which is get uh, devour some hang gliders and if you notice there's none on the screen at the minute but sometimes they you'll see exclamation marks pop up above you which is basically telling you where the objectives are in this case the hang gliders so you can see the exclamation mark is there so it's telling me that there's the hang gliders that I can devour and uh, the, basically that, that's, the, that's the game you just go through the game getting objectives or completing objectives, eating fish, people, and various other things in order to stay alive, try and avoid the mines, otherwise your, your health's gonna go down even quicker, obviously, if you uh, go into mines or go into rocks and things like that, your health's gonna go down quicker. But it's a game of survival and a game of uh, basically completing objectives. There's a whole leveling up mechanics and, and things like that to keep you playing, but as I said, it is a free-to-play game. Uh, but they have to try and get you to uh, spend money somehow. Uh, but that's Jaws Revenge. The third game that we're talking about this week is Amateur Surgeon 3. And obviously being a, the third game in the series, there has been two before. Uh, this one's Tag Team Trauma is its subtitle. So you can guess from the subtitle that the at least some of the gameplay is to do with tag teaming and teaming up with other people. So if you jump on play, jump into my save. Obviously, as with a couple of games that you've seen recently, it's a free game, it's Amateur Surgeon 3, so expect to see ads. It's not difficult to close them down, but expect to see them. So there's plenty of levels to play through, uh, quite a lot of levels. Uh, 
things that you unlock later on are from the stars obviously that you get through uh, performing actions or performing the uh, surgeries I suppose in uh, in each of the levels for each of the scenarios so there's in this in shanks lot prison there's four scenarios you can get up to three stars just for doing the mission themselves and there's two stars so I jump into them you can you can see you can get three for just doing the um, the mission or the the surgery uh, ba based on how quick you do it and whether you make any mistakes is how it determines whether you get one two or three stars and then once you've completed once you can complete again for bonuses one at a time so you can do that one you get that star for doing it within two minutes and that one for uh, doing it without any uh, any mistakes so if we jump into the main mission so there's a story for, for each of the scenarios there's a, uh, a story that you can you can play through but we'll uh, I'll let you read all that yourself enjoy the story in your own time I'll just skip through the story to get to the surgery the main aspect of the gameplay so we we'll press start, and this is where you select the tag partner. As I said, it's free game, so you, you use the uh, the points, the coins that you get from doing the surgeries to to buy more partners as you want. I've just got the first one, Mr. Giblets, Mr. Giblets, Giblets probably. So use him and press start. If you use once you've used him, uh, the the partner you you can't use him again for thirty minutes. They have to cool down. Uh, another thing that's uh, quite prevalent in free to play games. So we'll try and get through this as quickly as we can. Try to do it too fast. There we go. So use a chainsaw on these uh, bits of cement. It's amateur surgeon, so don't expect it to be uh, quite high level. It's not. So we'll try and get through it as quickly as we can. Uh, again, with the uh, in order to get the high scores, the the three stars you can see in the top left hand corner, next to the uh, the heartbeat, which you've got to keep an eye on at the time, is uh, the combo meter. And to uh, to get the three stars, to get the uh, the most you can get, you got to try and keep this combo going, which basically means doing what I am doing without making mistakes. Uh, which is quite difficult when you're using a chainsaw to take out what looks like a stomach and doing it too fast. You got to be careful in various different things, aspects of the game to go, you know, not do too fast, not do too slow. It's quite difficult when you've never used that um, that item before. Uh, I've used the chainsaw before, but I'm still n not as good as I think I am with it. So we'll put the new stomach in and we'll burn it into place, as you do when you're doing a, a surgery. Burn the thing into place, use the healing gel to make sure there's no, I don't know, probably bodily rejection or something like that. And then that's it. And then we can staple the, uh, the injury back together, cauterize it heal it. Now there's something else wrong with him so we have to open it up. Oh, his lungs have turned to cement. He's not doing too bad in terms of his health although it is going down quickly than quicker than I would hope so we'll tag in Mr. Giblets and see his tag power. Basically he licks the inside of the wound and heals him as it does. As you would expect it's a, it's an adult swim game so it's, it's not to be taken seriously obviously and uh, the humour is part of uh, the reasons to why there's three of these games. People love them, and I love them. So we'll try and get rid of all this. Heal that up. And cut the lungs out. Try not to do things too fast this time. Cut across. Keeping that combo going. And then use the uh, tongs, it looks like they are. Food, just food tongs. To put the new lung in. Cauterize it into place with a lighter and then heal it. You can see in the top left hand corner as well the combo is in the rainbow thing which basically means it can't go any higher than that. Uh, but it can go lower. Ah, he's dying. Let's put, inject him. you got to keep an eye on the uh, on the heart rate as well. You, but you can inject uh, in order to keep it, um, keep it up. You, you have got to keep an eye on it. It can be easy to uh, to forget about it while you're carefully tracing around uh, the lines. One thing about the lines as well is it's obviously a little bit more difficult on uh, what I'm using now, it's an iPod Touch. I have played it on the iPad as well and it's a lot easier on the iPad. But if you're, if you're wanting to play it on, uh, like on the train to work or something like that, it's fully capable of doing that. It's not impossible to play on a smaller screen, it's just slightly more difficult. 
and that's that surgery done and that's amateur surgeon three